We are doing it. On Friday, I stood with a group of brave and courageous Muslims, and we stood and we provided a declaration to the world of reform. We ca are calling ourselves the Muslim Reform Movement, mm -hmm. and we are opposing a very real interpretation of Islam that espouses violence, social injustice, and political Islam. And what we did is we walked through the gates of the Islamic Center of Washington here in D.C., that's very much run by the government of Saudi Arabia and we posted our precepts on the door of that mosque because the problem is not simply in Syria. The problem is sitting in the birthplace of Islam in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, where this interpretation of Islam has gone out into the world over the last four decades, creating militancy groups from Indonesia to now San Bernardino, California's mm -hmm. vicious attack. We have to take back the faith and we have to take it back with a principles of peace, social justice and human rights, women's rights, and secularized yeah. governance. That is Azra Namani on Meet the Press this past Sunday. Now, Azra is a Muslim woman who, in my opinion, has shown a tremendous, tremendous amount of courage by saying what she just said right there in that clip. She's also one of the founders of a new group called the Muslim Reform Movement, and she joins us tonight. We're hoping to have her via Skype. She's going to join us via the phone. Azra, first off, I just want to say uh, thank you for the courage that you are showing, not only in that clip, but also in this new Muslim Reform Movement. I think many people out there that hear what you just said go, finally. Finally, Muslim leaders are standing up and speaking about this. And as well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, I want to start here, Azra. I mean, there's all this, I think, palatable fear going on right now when you look at what happened in Paris, San Bernardino, and then to bring it even more locally here, Azra. We recently had a, a Muslim man, I presume, he was saying Allah Akbar has happened, but went out and selectively uh, molested a woman in, in Mapleton, North Dakota, at a gas station. Just in the past couple of days, there's been some alleged times of Somali-owned businesses in Grand Forks, and I think a lot of that is stemming from this fear. What I'd love to know from you is what is the Muslim reform movement going to do to help dissipate some of the fear that we're feeling right now as a nation? Well, thank you first for having me. It's just such an honor to be able to talk to regular Americans. You know, our hope with the Muslim reform movement is to bring healing to the country and to Muslim communities also through the act of owning up owning up to the extremist interpretations of Islam that do exist in our world and in our communities, and by bringing forward a vision of peace, human rights, and secular governance that allows for coexistence and kindness and compassion, we really hope we can bring healing to the world. So talk about the secular governance, because I think many people would look at, obviously, if you, if you read the Quran, and many Muslims, I presume, would say, hey, this is the word from Allah, uh, and yet I don't know if secular governance is really part of the Quran. So how do you determine that when, I think it was a recent poll by the Center for Security Policy showed that 51% of American Muslims believe they should have a choice between Sharia and or the Constitution, and also a quarter of them believe that the use of violent jihad is justified in establishing Sharia. So how do you begin to uh, maybe help some of those Muslims understand the importance of a secular governance? Well, one of the uh, challenges that we have, is just as you point out, is that sadly this is not just minority views inside of our communities. But, you know, we've seen in the history of time that the majority views that now have not uh, stood the test of time, like slavery, segregation, apartheid, have been dismantled. And so I hope that we will have history as a as an indicator of future success for our movement. But our real um, strategy in our reform movement is to bring back this concept in Islamic history of this word called ishtihad. It sounds like jihad, and in a way, it is a struggle of the mind. It's a critical thinking process. It means critical thinking. And what we're saying is instead of taking literally verses and chapters that were revealed in the 7th century for the 7th century, recognize that they don't stand, they don't survive the test of time, and that what we have to do is fast forward some very important principles of progressiveness and uh, social justice that was improving the condition in the 7th century from the 6th century and bring it current into the 
21st century. And so this is our challenge. Our challenge is to educate our own community to the idea that you can think rationally about these ideas and use common sense. So just as one example, you know, a very simple example. In the Quran, it says literally that women are half the witness of men. So in the seventh century, that was considered progressive because women were given no witness otherwise. But now that's not acceptable. Now we have to continue that progressive spirit and say that women have equal rights. And, you know, there's this fancy word exegesis and another fancy word of uh, hermeneutics, these ideas of how you study theology. And what we want to try to do is really exercise our minds so that we can live with Islam compatible with modernity. Azra, one of the things I'd love to get from you, and you and I talked earlier today, but I, <clears throat> I look at many Americans, myself included, as sort of sitting ducks. And what I mean by that is that uh, a Muslim can basically tell us anything we want because none of us have really taken the time to study the Quran, the Hadith, the Prophet Muhammad. Any tips or teaching you would give us to go, hey, you know what, Chris, here's what you need to be privy to, here's what you need to be aware of, and here's what you probably should do to study a little bit about this religion to get a better understanding so you know if someone's trying to dupe you or not? Yeah, really great question. And one thing, big picture, I would really, uh, you know, encourage everyone is to trust your common sense. If something just doesn't feel right or sound right and doesn't sound just, trust yourself and and continue to ask questions. So often right now, people are told that they are Islamophobic or racist or bigoted if they challenge you know, conventional doctrine in the Muslim communities. And I just want you to know, you're not alone. We, the reformers, are, are labeled with the same allegation. So we're going to come forward with a reading list that we recommend. But right now, on websites that I've got under just my name, astronomani.com, I've got some recommended reading of some of the most critical thinking of our scholars. And I would recommend definitely going through those, this list of, uh, of books that I've suggested. There's Concepts that are going to blow your mind, like Islamic feminism, you know, things that you think are just, right? You think it's just like a contradiction in terms. But it's there. Like, we have women scholars who have uh, challenged the typically male interpretation. And, and let's be honest, like, every faith has gone through this. We're literally 700 years behind Christianity in terms of birth. And that's how far, you know, behind we are in terms of progress. But with hopefully all the great uh, skills that we can have in the 21st century, I'm, I'm really in confidence. I want to give people hope that we're going to be able to succeed in having this wow. reformation movement succeed in our generation. I got to tell you again, when I saw you Sunday at Meet the Press, you gave me hope. I want to, uh, I got a couple questions left. There's a couple more minutes here. I want to turn things into uh, the political, if you will. One, why, in your opinion, is it so difficult for President Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton to call this what it is, radical Islam? Why won't they use that term? Well, trying to give people the benefit of the doubt, I would try to think that maybe they're not educated about these realities of extremist ideology. And then next, because liberals and the left, of which I include myself, are very sensitive to minority rights, they have their own common sense. Uh, be trumped by their concern for political correctness. And thirdly, there is a Muslim lobby. There's a special interest group that wants to avoid having this tough conversation. Because when we challenge the ideologies of Islamism, which means political Islam, you're talking about challenging the theology of the countries of Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and so many other of these Muslim countries that make up this this entity called the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, which is a mini United Nation, and they are a power block. They are the ones that try to make it defamation and blasphemy when you talk about things related to Islam. And that's what we, the regular people, are standing up against. That's why we went to the front door of that mosque on Massachusetts Avenue. That mosque is run by all the Muslim countries <laughs> of the world. Yeah. Well, that's, and especially Saudi Arabia. Last question. I got one minute left, but I do want to encourage people to go to MuslimReformMovement.org. You can find out more about their preamble, what they intend to do. I think it's fantastic. Last question for you is this. I want to get your thoughts on Donald Trump saying no more Muslims coming into America. 
believe that this kind of sort of extreme solution is happening because we're not coming up with reasonable, rational solutions that help appease people's fears. So it's a failure of leadership at the White House to address this issue of Islamic extremism. And we have to, we the people have to recognize that Islam is not monolithic. There are reformers like us who want to challenge the status quo, and yet there is a problem. And so I'm confident we're going to come to North Dakota, we're going to have this conversation in person, and we're going to, we're going to forge the solution. You know, Gandhi says, be the change you want to see in the world. We are going to be that change. Osra, again, thank you so much, and let me know what I can help to do to get you here to North Dakota. I think it's very important that we have this conversation face to face. So thank you so much for your time. I look forward to talking to you soon, okay? Absolutely, and everybody please have hope. Thank you for that, we appreciate it. All right. Uh